Hey, hey, now welcome back. You're listening. Welcome, 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 I should say. Now welcome back. I feel like I have been here already. Welcome. You are listening to the Millionaire's Roundtable. I am your host, Lynn Richardson. It's WVON 1690 AM, the talk of Chicago, the voice of the nation, our favorite radio station, and we are creating millionaires one family at a time. One day at a time, one dollar at a time, and one dime at a time. And that means you. That means you have the ability to do it. All you have to do is get the knowledge and then take the action. The Bible says now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. So we are still in the week of doing. We are still in the week of getting things to the next level. Now, you know, I just had this epiphany. I sat here to start the show, and I I thought to myself, wow, I'm a businesswoman. Woo, I have been up for the past, I don't know, eight hours, <laughs> and I'm on the West Coast, so it's only 10 o'clock here, but I've been up for a long time doing a lot of work on all kinds of conference calls. You can't tell me I'm not the president of something because I'm busy as all get out. I wish I was a kid today, I'm telling you, but I'm having the time of my life, and um, just like you, I'm I'm doing it one step at a time, one day at a time, but I am a busy woman today on this Monday morning. So we got some stuff that we have to get out of the way. Uh, There are many of you who have reached out to me because you are trying to apply for the Paycheck Protection uh, Program, and you are flat out being told the wrong information. Okay? So I need you to listen to what I say, and if you are having difficulty uh, getting approved, then you want to go to asklin.org so you can go to the next step and get some kind of assistance. Because unfortunately, some of the banks uh, don't know what they're doing. You actually have to tell them what to do. So this Paycheck Protection Program that has been administered by the Small Business Association of the United States government in collaboration with the CARES Act Uh, allows freelancers, self-employed people, those with home-based businesses, and independent contractors to apply. Now, some of you are saying you're going to the bank and they're telling you that your business had to be registered. That is not true. Your business does not have to be registered anywhere if you're self-employed. Let me repeat. If you are self-employed, let's say you're a DJ, Uh, Let's say you are, um, you know, you do MLM, network marketing, and you receive a 1099. Your business doesn't have to be registered any any place. This is what you need on your application. You need your name and your social security number. And then when it asks for your business name, you need to write your name again because that is your business name. When they ask for your employer identification number, you're going to write your social security number again, or you're going to provide your social security number again. And if you are working with a bank that does not know what to do, then you need to go to asklin.org and find one that does. So if you're out there and you're trying to get approved through the Paycheck Protection Program, uh, there's a video that I did in collaboration with Diddy and Robert Smith. You can go to myfairshare.org and get some detailed instructions and next steps. Um, however, if you have done all that and you still are having trouble, then you just might need my office to take a look at um, everything that you have. So uh, if you're a part of the Entrepreneurs Academy or if you are a wealth ambassador, then we provide that service at no additional charge to go through and make sure that you have all the paperwork that you need. Because I got funded under the EIDL and the Paycheck Protection Program, and I submitted as a sole proprietor. Yes, I have other businesses or I'm a part of other businesses, but I my business is I am a sole proprietor, okay? So I applied exactly how I'm telling you, so I know it can be done, and I know that it has been done for many people. It's been done for Thousands, probably hundreds of thousands, probably millions. But I know several hundred folks uh, personally who have already gotten approved through this particular method. So if you have a corporation, yes, that's fine. If you pay, did payroll and you had 941s, that's fine. But if you are not a corporation, if you are self-employed, a sole proprietor, then you are still eligible. Um, so you want to make sure that you are taking a look at that. You are listening to the Millionaire's Roundtable. And uh, we are creating millionaires one family at a time, 
-hmm. one day at a time, one dollar at a time and one dime at a time. So we've been talking about the stair steps to wealth and we were on spend less money. And uh, it took us a couple of days to get through that. And now we are on get more money. So everybody's job is to go get a job. Even if you already have a job, that is your job. <laughs> if you don't have a job, your job is to get a job. If you do have a job, your job is to get a job. What job am I talking about? Whatever one that is legal, ethical, and moral and pays you money. Because now is the time to stack your cash, right? And so everybody needs to have a home-based business, right? So that's one of the ways. But I'm also going to talk about some other side hustles and things uh, that you can do. Uh, my clients, um, Leo and Faith, were on a Steve Harvey show, and they paid off over $200,000 in debt in about a two-and-a-half-year period. And they are not rich. They don't have rich parents. They don't have a, a trust fund. They did it through grinding and hard work. And if they can do it, so could you. You're listening to the Millionaire's Roundtable. I'm your host, Lynn Richardson. It's WVON. 1690 AM. We have to take a break for traffic and weather with Samantha Thomas. We'll be right back. WVON. More of the Millionaire's Roundtable coming up on the Talk of Chicago. 1690 WVON. There's hope. Learn how to get your kids in order and get your money back all at the same time in Lynn Richardson's game-changing webinar, How to Turn Your Homeschool into a Home-Based Business. Learn how to write off your daily expenses. Give your kids structure. Teach your kids about money and make extra money for yourself. Plus, your kids will get their newest book, My First Job, A Kid's Guide to Money and Entrepreneurship. Reserve your space at www.asklin.org. That's www.asklin.org today. Hi, this is Lynn Richardson. Are you one of the 20 in 2020? That's right. I'm going to take 20 people in the year of 2020 and help you crack the code to make your first $100,000 or your next $100,000. Visit www.lynnrichardson.com. Click connect with Lynn. That's www.lynnrichardson.com. Are you one of my 20 in 2020? A little check to Monday, a little check to Monday, a little check to Monday, are you a little check to Monday, and then I just never tell you what you need to do, she is a mortgage guru, no doubt about it, she knows our stuff, hey, the girl is tough, she's gonna be with a real deal in money, credit and financial security, Buy your book today, no need to wait. Live a check to Monday. Hey, live a check to Monday. I live a check to Monday. I live a check to Monday. Are you live a check to Monday? Get your copy of Check to Monday today. Get your copy of Check to Monday today. Get your copy of Check to Monday. Do you want to leave a legacy for your loved ones? Do you know the difference between an estate plan and a will? Are you newly engaged and concerned about getting a prenuptial agreement? Are you married to your child's mother or father? And do you know what happens to insurance money if you are not? Call your wealth counselor, Attorney Deidre Woodstokes. With over 22 years of experience, Attorney Stokes has all the answers you need to help you secure your family's financial future. You can find Attorney Stokes on Lynn's List at www.lynnmillionaire.com. That's www.lynnmillionaire.com or call 888-LYNN-123. That's 888 888- Five nine six six one two three. Protect your legacy now.
Hey, now, welcome back. You're listening to the Millionaire's Roundtable. I am your host, Lynn Richardson. It's WVON 1690 AM, the talk of Chicago, the voice of the nation, our favorite radio station. And we are creating millionaires one family at a time, one day at a time, one dollar at a time, and one dime at a time. If you are self-employed, a freelancer, independent contractor, or other kind other kind of employee, you are entitled to assistance through the CARES Act and the Small Business Association, and uh, you want to make sure that you get what is uh, owed and uh, available to you. So go to org if you need help. And although the Paycheck Protection Program is a loan, there is a way for it to be forgiven. So once you get the dollars, then you want to know how to spend them. You want you have to use up to 75% has to be used for payroll. So here's the beautiful thing about it. Let's say you're an independent contractor and let's say you made $80,000 last year and you successfully apply for and receive the paycheck protection loan. And they're going to give you a number, a dollar amount, somewhere between 15 and $17,000. Okay. It's going to be somewhere around there. Um, I don't have the exact calculation on me, but it'll be somewhere around there. You'll get about seventeen, eighteen thousand dollars $18,000, somewhere in that number. Then you get to spend 75% of that on payroll, okay? So if you spend 75% on payroll, that means you get to pay yourself $13,500. So when you get the Paycheck Protection Loan, you want the money to go into one account that is specifically for business use, specifically for business use, and then you want to pay yourself from that account. And you should try to pay yourself with a check or some kind of mechanism that makes it very clear that it's a payroll check. So if you transfer the money to yourself, it needs to be very clear that it's a payroll transfer, and it needs to be noted in the description of the transfer. If it's a check that you write to yourself from your account, then you want to make sure you write in the memo section, payroll. So that 75% that goes towards payroll, you are a part of the people who can be paid. You're, you're one of those people. If you have any other employees, that's fine. But if it's all your income, then you get that money. And then the remaining 25% can go towards utilities or rent for your business. Once again, you have to be very clear and very specific. So there's nobody who should get the Paycheck Protection Loan who should have to pay it back. Don't go out buying jujus. Don't go out buying a new whatever, okay? You can buy that stuff after you pay yourself. So everything that I have been teaching about financial, uh, really how to get to the next level, especially when I talk about how to get your money back, because all of this time everybody's been thinking, just go make more money. Even some people figured it out. Let's spend more, less money, let's get more money. But people don't realize you also need to get your money back. And if you are not getting your money back, then you're missing 75% of the way to maintain your wealth. Getting your money back is all about putting your money in a different column, calling it something else. So when you give your child an allowance, you don't get that back. But if you hire your child and give them a paycheck, you do. It's the same thing here with the paycheck protection loan. If you take the money and go buy a pair of shoes, you, you're going to have to pay it back. But if you take the money and pay yourself a salary, then you don't have to pay it back. And once you pay yourself that salary, then you can go buy a pair of shoes. Now, you might think, let me go get this paycheck protection loan because I need to buy some equipment. Um, I need to go out and, you know, I need to, to get some gas in my car because I'm an Uber driver or I need to do some things to keep working. Those are not allowable expenses. I want you to be very clear about that. The expenses to maintain work are not to be covered with the Paycheck Protection Funds. You have to pay salary. It's in, and it's in the title. It's called a Paycheck Protection. It's to protect your paycheck. It's to literally provide you with funds to keep working and paying yourself and your employees and to house them. So the rent and the utilities, that all makes sense, okay? So you want to make sure you put things in the right column, and if you don't know what you're doing, or if you're meeting roadblocks, go to asklyn.org. You're listening to the Millionaire's Roundtable. I am your host, Lynn Richardson. It's WVON. We have to take a break for news, traffic, and weather because it's 1230 on the Talk of Chicago with uh, Samantha Thomas. We'll be right back. WVON.
More of the Millionaire's Roundtable coming up on the Talk of Chicago, 1690 WVON. Parents, there's hope. Learn how to get your kids in order and get your money back all at the same time in Lynn Richardson's game-changing webinar, How to Turn Your Homeschool into a Home-Based Business. Learn how to write off your daily expenses. Give your kids structure. Teach your kids about money and make extra money for yourself. Plus, your kids will get their newest book, My First Job, A Kid's Guide to Money and Entrepreneurship. Reserve your space at www.asklin.org. That's www.asklin.org today. Now, welcome back. You're listening to the Millionaire's Roundtable. I am your host, Lynn Richardson. It's WVON, 1690 AM, the talk of Chicago, the voice of the nation, our favorite radio station, and we are creating millionaires, one family at a time, one day at a time, one dollar at a time, and one dime at a time, and that means you. And uh, I want to make sure that everybody is clear about uh, what it is that you need to get to the next level with uh, your finances. So we want to reiterate that if you are self-employed, if you are an independent contractor, if you receive a 1099, uh, if you earn cash and you report your income, that's the key. You have to report your income. If you do any of that, then you are eligible for the Paycheck Protection Program. Now, there are many of you who have said that you've gone out and you actually started, you applied a long time ago, uh, maybe towards the end of March or maybe the first part of April, and the EIDL program has been sending out updates to let people know uh, that uh, they are still processing applications. So they're still processing applications. Uh, don't, um, don't think that all is lost. Uh, don't think that uh, you have been forgotten. Make sure that you continue to do what you've been doing. But if you are self-employed, if you are an independent contractor, if you are a freelancer, if you babysit for a living, if you do graphic arts, if you are an Uber driver, if you drive for Lyft or Share or any of those services, uh, anybody who is self-employed, yes, you are eligible. I do not want you thinking that you are not eligible because people who don't know what they're talking about are telling you that you're not. Now, let me give you the list of people who are telling you, who may be telling you that you need certain things, but they don't know what they're talking about. Uh, I've had cases where uh, folks are saying that their tax preparer told them that they needed certain things if they're self-employed, and they're telling them that they need to have their businesses mm -hmm. registered. That is not true. If you are self-employed, the whole idea is that you operate the way the United States government allows you to operate. So remember, this is not a state program. This is a federal program. And when you have a home-based business, when you are self-employed, then the federal government tells you that you get to use your name and your Social Security number. Now, when someone says to you, well, no, you cannot, I want you to tell them, Go look at the Schedule C. The Schedule C of the 1040 tax return is where self-employed individuals report their income and their expenses, okay? 
and it asks for your name or your business name. It asks for your Social Security number or your tax ID number. You do not have to have a business name. You do not have to have, I'm sorry, an employer identification number. Everybody has a tax ID number, okay? A tax ID number is either your Social Security number or your employer identification number. So once again, if you are self-employed, if you do hair, if you do nails, if you are a DJ, if you are a babysitter, if you uh, are a home health care worker, if you receive a 1099, if you do network marketing, if you do any of those jobs and you are self-employed, then you can apply for the Paycheck Protection Program. So the first people who are telling you that you don't qualify is your tax professional, not true. The second place that you may go and you may be rejected is your bank. Now, some banks want you to already have an account. Now, I am not telling you what is theoretical. I'm telling you what I know. What I know and what has happened to me and hundreds of others who I know and work with is they use their name, their Social Security number, and uh, two banks approved me, and I didn't even have a business account, okay? I didn't even have a business account. But I am a self-employed individual, and lots of banks know that self-employed individuals carry a personal account as a business account. So you do not have to have a business account at some banks, okay? Now, because the program has been so widely publicized, some of these banks are not accepting new applications, but you should try them out anyway. Check with your credit union. Check with that community bank that's on the main street at the end of the block. Yes, the community banks. It might not be the big, you might have an account at Chase. You might have an account at Bank of America or Wells Fargo or Citibank or one of the bigger banks. But check with the smaller banks because they have paycheck protection money and all you may need to do is open a personal account with them or open a business account with them. So you want to call around and check. I got approved as a sole proprietor, a self-employed person, and I got approved as a self-employed person at a big bank and at a small bank. So if your small bank will not help you or the big bank, then you want to, do you have a PayPal account? Apply through your PayPal account. Now, if you have a PayPal account, you're going to need some additional information, and I'll tell you that momentarily. You're listening to the Millionaire's Roundtable. I am your host, Lynn Richardson. It's WVON 1690 AM, the talk of Chicago, the voice of the nation. We have to take a break for traffic and weather with Samantha Thomas. We'll be right back. WVON. More of the Millionaire's Roundtable coming up on the talk of Chicago. 1690 WVON. Are you struggling with your finances? Have you tried everything you can think of but just can't seem to get ahead on your own? Well, it's time to get some help. With a financial coach, you can find out what you don't know and learn to make better choices when it comes to your finances. Lynn Richardson's Wealth Vision 2020 Financial Coaching provides step-by-step instructions daily, a one-stop shop to create your budget, access to vetted financial coaches in specialized areas such as mortgages, insurance, real estate, investing, taxes, and more. Lynn Richardson and her team will help you set goals, undo bad habits, push you past your own beliefs, and gain peace with your finances. Go to www.lynnrichardson.com. That's www.lynnrichardson.com. Or call 888-LYNN-123. That's 888-596-6123 for more info today. Parents, there's hope. Learn how to get your kids in order and get your money back all at the same time in Lynn Richardson's game-changing webinar, How to Turn Your Homeschool into a Home-Based Business. Learn how to write off your daily expenses. Give your kids structure. Teach your kids about money and make extra money for yourself. Plus, your kids will get their newest book, My First Job, A Kid's Guide to Money and Entrepreneurship. Reserve your space at www.asklin.org. That's www.asklin.org today.
Welcome back. You're listening to the Millionaire's Roundtable. I am your host, Lynn Richardson. It's WVON 1690 AM, the talk of Chicago, the voice of the nation, our favorite radio station. And we are creating millionaires, one family at a time, one day at a time, one dollar at a time, and one dime at a time. And that means you. So you want to make sure uh, you know if you're self-employed. I'm getting questions from people saying, am I self-employed? I sing at weddings. And yes, you're self-employed. Unless you, here's the definition of self-employed. You work for somebody, you get paid, and it's not a W-2. Okay? If you work for any, if you work doing any kind of work, and you get paid, and you do not receive a W-2, then you are self-employed. If you fix cars, you know, back in the day, we had alley mechanics. The alley mechanics are the best mechanics on the planet because you go to the shop and they want to change your engine for $45,000, and the alley mechanic down the street will do it for $2. You know, I mean, I'm being uh, drastic here, but you know the alley mechanic, you, and you pay them cash. If you're an alley mechanic, if, you are, if that's your side hustle, then you are self-employed. So any work that you do that you earn money for. Now, if you don't earn any money, you, it's not a job. You're not self-employed. It's called a hobby. So you have to earn money if you are uh, in the game. And then the other thing is, do you have to file taxes? You have to report your income. Yes. So a lot of people, let me tell you all who's winning. Everybody who is self-employed and who is collecting cash and not reporting it, you are not winning. That is not what you call winning. Because even if you report the money, if you learn how to run your life like a business, I can teach you about the 475 tax deductions so you can get your money back. So let me give you example A, hairstylist A. She works in the salon, she gets paid cash, and she doesn't put any of it in the bank. She spends all her money. She might even collect um, public assistance because she technically doesn't report any income so she applies for all the public assistance and she takes care of things she thinks she's winning, she's not the hairstylist that actually took all of her money and put it in the bank now can apply for the paycheck protection program because people aren't coming into the salon right now to get their hair done so she doesn't have to lose any income she can actually now get a significant amount of income to carry her through the next two to three months, okay? So that's the difference. You want to learn the rules of the game and then play the game by the rules. If you want to know how to hire your child as an employee, you need to go to asklin.org and take the webinar. Hire your kids and get your money back. You need to know all of the steps and you need to know how to do it properly so that you will not get in trouble with the IRS in the event that you are audit, audited. And when I say trouble, I don't mean going to jail or anything. I just mean they will disallow your deduction because you don't do it properly. All right? Is writing a book a home-based business? If you are writing books and speaking and teaching and you are working in that business with the intent to make a profit, yes. Okay? So uh, all these questions. Um, will you still be able to purchase a home if you have over 400 deductions? So let me just address this with everybody out there who is saying, well, if I write off expenses, I won't be able to buy a house. I am never going to pay the IRS more money so I can go and get more debt. That's backwards. 
That is not wealthy thinking at all. So you're going to not take your deductions so you can qualify for more debt? Mm Mm-mm. No, that's not what you do. You get every deduction that you possibly can, and then we work on a strategy for you to get approved for a mortgage anyway. Because if you're getting your money back, then you are in a much higher caliber in terms of financial stability because you have the money. So the goal is to increase cash flow and literally get to the next level. Um, If you are self-employed and people want to know how to apply for unemployment, you need to go to your state's website and click unemployment, okay? So everybody can file for unemployment. And, yes, you can also apply for the Paycheck Protection Program, all right? So you want to make sure you are doing things the proper way. And as I stated earlier, once you get the money from the Paycheck Protection Program, you have to use it. 75% has to be used for your salary, and that means you can pay yourself, write yourself a payroll check, and the other 25% has to be used for rent and utilities, uh, one of the two, all right? And and then some uh, some interest payments are also allowed, but... That's pretty much uh, the way that you want to do it. So you want to go to asklin.org, and you want to um, submit the information and and go to the next level. Uh, That's what the bank and the realtor told me. Now I owe the IRS 10K. I don't know who or what it is. See, you all have to stop listening to what people say, and then you have to go get a financial education. You cannot come and get one step and then go. That's like learning division, but you never took the time to master multiplication, subtraction, and um, addition. So you got to go all the way. You're listening to the Millionaire's Roundtable. I am your host, Lynn Richardson. It's WVON 1690 AM, the talk of Chicago. Apply for the Paycheck Protection Program. If you're having trouble, go to asklin.org, become a part of the Entrepreneur's Academy, and my team will help you get your application through. We can't guarantee it, but we can at least make sure the right information gets into the right hands. Uh, Follow me at Lynn Millionaire, and also follow me at Lynn Richardson. Follow this radio show at Lynn Millionaire. Follow me at Lynn Richardson. Uh, Go to asklin.org, and I'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.